Hi folks. In this video I'm going to review the Super Racer, which is a Delta Style FDM 3D printer from FL Sun that has a 260mm diameter by 330mm high print volume and linear rails built into its vertical supports which help it to create good quality prints at speeds of up to 200mm per second, which is three times the speed of a standard hobby printer. The nozzle is rated for up to 260 degrees Celsius and the hot glass bed can reach up to 100 degrees Celsius, so it can print common filaments like PLA, PETG, and ABS. It also has auto bed leveling, a filament detection sensor, a resume printing feature in case of power loss, and it also has a touchscreen terminal for working offline. It does need to be assembled, but there aren't many parts to deal with and it only took me around 20 minutes to finish. I started by fastening the vertical supports to the top, then installed the bracket for the touchscreen before installing the base and flipping the assembled frame right side up. Next, I installed the parallel arms that hold and move the hot end module around the work area. Notice that the connection points are lubricated. A tube of grease is also supplied with the printer for regular maintenance. After the arms were on, I installed the module and connected the wiring harness. As I mentioned earlier, this printer also has a filament runout sensor located just above the extruder, which I installed next before connecting the PTFE tube and filament holder. Then I tucked all the tools and spare parts away in the convenient tool drawer that's built into the base. This machine can be powered by either 110 or 220 volts. It's set to 220 volts when it ships, so I flip the switch on the side to set it for 110 before turning it on. The main page on the touchscreen shows the temperature of the nozzle and heat bed, and provides options for changing device settings, calibrating the printer, and printing offline using an SD card. But before I could print, I needed to calibrate the machine and I started by attaching the leveling switch and starting the auto bed leveling process where the printer uses the switch to take vertical measurements at different points around the heat bed to develop a profile of any distortions in its surface so that the printer can adjust its z-axis movements to compensate while printing. The switch is held on the module by a magnet and removed after the bed leveling is completed.
Next, I set the Z offset between the nozzle and the heat bit to roughly the thickness of a sheet of A4 paper. I use the up and down controls on the touchscreen to move the module until there is a slight amount of friction between the paper and the nozzle. Then I saved it before moving on to loading the filament onto the holder and feeding it into the extruder until it touches the wheels. Then I heated the nozzle to 200 degrees Celsius and used the controls on the touchscreen to power the extruder motor and feed the filament into the hot end until it came out the nozzle. With the filament loaded and the nozzle preheated, the machine was ready to print something. So I started with the test file provided on the SD card. Aside from how interesting it looks, one of the first things that I was impressed with is how quiet this machine is. I had to turn the volume up for some of these shots because it was hardly noticeable. The total print time for this knurled nut and bolt was around 38 minutes with a top speed of up to 180 millimeters per second, and they turned out great. I don't see any issues with these at all. Bed adhesion was great, extrusion was consistent, there are no blobs, holes, or strings anywhere, and the nut fits the bolt perfectly. Next I printed a standard Benchy which took roughly 47 minutes at the same speed. This time there were a couple of tiny lumps on the side, but fixing that is just a matter of making an adjustment or two in the slicer, so that's totally on me. The rest of it turned out great. The slicer that I'm using for this machine is Ultimaker Cura. The profile for this printer is already listed in the software, so setting it up is just a matter of selecting the FL Sun Super Racer from the list and clicking Next.
I wanted to see how well it does with a longer, more complicated print, so I imported an STL file of a large segmented dragon and used the presets for generic PLA on the right side of the page before slicing. After slicing, Cura shows how long the print will take and how much filament will be used. Then I inspected the layers before exporting the G-code to the SD card and importing it to the printer to start printing. After printing the white dragon, I decided to print another with a different filament to see what sort of consistency we get. Both of these prints turned out great. There was strong bit adhesion even with the smaller parts, no extrusion issues, and no messes. I couldn't expect any better. This is the first Delta printer that I've used, but so far it's been a pleasure. Setup was super simple, and I haven't had any problems with it. The print speed is fast, and the quality is great. This is a nice working machine, and I think it looks pretty cool too. But that's it for this video, folks. If you are interested in getting one of these, check out the links in the video description. FL Sun is launching a couple of new printers that might interest you as well, so I link to those in the description too. If you enjoyed this video, let me know with a thumbs up or a comment, and be sure to subscribe for the next one. Thanks for watching and take care.